Hey guys, and welcome back to part two of tutorial number three, which is on flash prints support structures. The first part we were looking at tree-like supports and we were looking at a reasonably complex model to, to demonstrate it on. Uh, today, or not today, it's the same video, now we're going to look at uh, linear supports, which was the, the other option that we had available. And I've actually grabbed a, a Raspberry Pi case to, to use it as a as an example because personally this is the sort of model that I would be using uh, linear on nothing you know crazy sorts of geometry it's a rectangular shape with cutouts and you know rectangular cutout circular cutout you know it's rounded but there's nothing overly fancy about it so the reason why I like linear for this sort of stuff is you can basically just push them out really simply so let us go back into our support button and bring up the dialog. I already have it clicked onto linear, which again, if you're up uh, up on your uh, support option dialog, you top section, right hand button will bring that over. The overhang threshold is still the same uh, as it was in uh, tree-like, so 55 degrees, and higher value, less supports, lower value, greater amounts of supports. The next section is the pillar size. Now, this goes from one millimeter all the way up to eight and it's basically the overhang threshold so smaller number will provide greater levels of support and it'll be fairly tight tightly um tightly spaced eight mil will be much wider so it'll have bigger overhangs between the supports as to what you use would probably be based on the model and the type of filament that you're going to be printing it out of so for me if i'm using asa which i might have mentioned in one of my other videos is one of the most common filaments i'm touching base with i will be using a smaller uh, a smaller pillar size here just because asa generally not printing it with a cooling fan and it's, it doesn't really like overhangs. You know, it can do some, but not to the same degree as PLA. We've also got the same little checkbox here. Touch platform only, which uh, hopefully you remember what it does. It basically tells the platform only to generate supports from the uh, from the build plate. Which, if we, if we generate supports now, uh, we get nothing. Because there's nothing that needs support off the build plate. So I actually I actually did this once where I was wondering why the supports were generating because I hadn't noticed that I'd, I'd left this this checked. So if you ever ever do something silly like that, um, yeah, just double check that button. So unclick it and auto supports again, and here we go. We've got supports generated in all these little gaps. Some of these ones, like I'd probably pull out like these little ones I, I don't feel you'd need support if you were printing these in PLA the program does because of the uh, pillar size where if we made this I believe slightly larger and it auto supports it again and yes there we go some of them are actually gone again just to go through the options we'll, we'll use these as a good example is I've decided I don't really need them so our manually buttons can add or remove as we want that'll change the color to unclick nope they're green all the time on this it seems it uh, hovering over will turn them light blue a single left click will allow you to remove them and if we go to add you can hover them in there and it'll pop up and a single left click to actually add those supports these ones are a whole lot easier to add um, compared to tree like that's for sure but maybe it's just a bit of talent when it comes to tree like I'm, I'm I might not be that talented so I am going to get rid of these things and make you watch. Sorry about that, but the video is not going to be that long. Go on, get out of here. Yep, man, that's all the ones I don't really want. So I've got supports where I feel like they should exist. And then hitting back. Don't know why you've gone all the way out there. Hitting back, start slicing. Let's slice it and show you what the uh, what the supports actually look like in this this method. Alrighty. Now look, it's very hard to, to demonstrate what I did with the um, the dragon and the difference between them. Uh, but with linear supports, quicker print time, but it will use a greater amount of material. Where I don't know if they've got a breakdown on this program of how much material is used for different things. I know on Cura it does, but not on uh, not on flash print. 
Flash Forge people, if by any chance you're watching that, can we request a feature? Please uh, provide a percentage of uh, filament usage here in our structure. Anyway, getting past that, let us look at what the uh, support structure will actually look like. Move it down to about there, because this went well, too far. Come on. There we are. So this will show you what this support structure is actually going to look like. Now I call it a zigzag shape because I guess it gets similar to a zigzag shape and I don't know if there's a proper name for it, but it'll basically uh, print in one continuous line with some right angles to bridge it back and forth and back and forth. So that's what it's going to come out like, where once it's all done, what you can generally do is, with just your finger, I've found, is push in one side of it and basically just pull it out and it'll pull out in one long for the most part, one long piece. So, like, it's not too hard to remove and works quite well for this sort of shape. And there's really not much more to it. That is that is linear supports. Um, it's entirely up to you what you use. Speaking to different people are going to give you different answers. I've given my personal opinions on this, and it doesn't mean that it's right or wrong. It's just what I use. So I think the best thing with 3D printing is it's experimenting and finding what settings, structures, etc., work well for what you're doing. So, yeah, look, keep that in mind with every piece of information you see. It doesn't mean it's necessarily going to be working for you, so definitely fiddle. But that is the support structures, uh, at least the support structure dialogue sorted. There are further settings that we will look into when we go into the slicing settings. But the next video from here will be on IDEX printing. So if you don't have an IDEX machine, which is the one with the dual print heads, you can skip that, and the next video for you would be the slicer settings. So again, thank you for watching, and if you have any further questions, feel free to either drop them in the comments below, or uh, join up to the FlashForge Facebook group if you haven't already.